Okay, so let's cover the uh, the Ross chapter 27 and 28 material. This has to do with the two stems known as the PL and the Pu'al. So we took a long time introducing the first stem, the cal. Then a, a little bit of a long time, I guess, but not quite as long, introducing the nifal. Uh, and then here we're going to actually cover the PL and the Pu'al together. So we're going to get a crash course in both of these. Now, that may seem a little bit daunting, but uh, the, the good news here is that the PL and the Pu'al are actually mirrors of each other, and they go together. And so once we learn the PL, learning the Pu'al is going to be very, very easy, okay, because they're, they're almost the same. Now... Um, I'm going to hold off on talking about what it means to put a verb in the, in the PL stem. And I'm going to talk uh, more or less uh, about the PL first. But at least uh, I can say this. Uh, the PL stem is often referred to as the intensive stem. That's the way a lot of people describe it. Although this intensive notion is only one of the semantic nuances of this stem. Uh, the PL itself is an active stem, and when we're talking about active voice, what we mean is that the subject performs the action, okay? So, so all verbs will have a subject, and in the PL, the subject performs the action. Now, the passive counterpart uh, to the PL is the PUAL stem. And uh, uh, there, the, in the PUAL stem, the subject is not performing the action. Rather, some action is being performed on the subject. So uh, I like to use the linguistic term, the patient. The, the subject is the patient, that is, uh, is not doing anything. Rather, someone's doing something to the subject. So whatever the verb means in the PL, in the PUAL, it means the same thing, only passive, just like our CAL and NIFAL distinction there. Uh, in both of the, the, four, uh, the stems, the PL and the PUAL, the form is characterized by doubling in root two. So we are going to be looking for a dogish forte in root two, root two. And uh, for our paradigm verb, pakad, in the PL, it means to muster or to summon. And so the pu'al would be to, to be summoned or to be mustered. All right. So let's take a look at the principal parts uh, here. And then uh, as we look at each one, we're going to go to the next couple of pages on your handout. And we're going to fill in the, uh, the vowel pointing for the forms, okay? So look at the PL, first of all, and, and look at the perfect. We're just going to focus on the perfect conjugation. The perfect conjugation is also the, uh, called the suffix conjugation because we indicate the subject by changing the suffixes, right? Now look at uh, the PL perfect. I have picade, picade. First thing I want you to, to think about here with me is the dots. What kind of a dot is in the pay here. That is a dagesh lene. That's a dagesh lene. What is a dagesh lene? It's the dot that comes standard with any begadkafat letter. Begadkafat letters come standard with dagesh lene, and it only goes away if what precedes it? Yes, it only goes away. It only goes away if a vowel precedes it or a vocal shiva, right? So, uh, so that pay should have a dot in it because nothing's before it. Now look at this kof here. What kind of a dot is that? That's a dagesh forte. How do I know that's a dagesh forte? Well, th that's not the only reason I know. Dagesh lenes can only go in begad kafat letters, right? Is kof a begad kafat letter? No. no, kof is not a begad kafat letter. And so I'm uh, not going to be looking for um, a dot in any letter unless it's a dagesh forte like this, right? So, so that is a dagesh forte. Now, dagesh fortes will have to have a vowel before them. So that is true. But that's not the only reason you know, okay? Kof is just not a begad kafat letter, so any dot must be a forte. Okay, and that's what's true of all of the PL and the Pu'al forms. Notice, root two is the kof in pakad, and notice the kof has doubling all the way down the line. And the Pu'al, notice pukad, I get doubling in root two, the kof, all the way down the line also. 
Okay, so both the PL and the PUL are characterized by doubling in root two. Now, here is the basic vowel pointing then for the PL perfect. Picade, it's a Kyrick under root one and a Sere with root two of the theme vowel. Picade, picade. All I need to know is that form. In the perfect 3MS, the ending is zero. And what I have to do is simply add the appropriate personal endings to get all the other persons besides 3MS. Okay? So let's, let's uh, go down to the second page of your handout. And here on the, the second page, we can go ahead and just write in the word PL for our PL perfect here. So what are we going to do to form the PL perfects here? We learned the basic form there in that principal parts sheet, the pay with the dogish lene, Kyrick under it, Kof gets doubling dot, and a Sere in root two. So everybody has that? So picade. He summoned. Okay? That's how we're going to translate that. He summoned. Now, what's the 3FS going to be? I basically take the basic form picade with its doubling dot, and I add a commentate to the end. Okay, so I've already uh, prefabbed this for you with all of the perfect personal endings. You recognize all these endings, don't you? Nothing, ah, ta, ta, ti, u, tem, ten, nu. Okay, those are all the same as the cal perfect, all the same personal endings as the nifal perfect. PL perfect uses all the same endings, okay? This is good news. What's different is the pointing, okay? The pointing on the front, uh, the, the first part of this. So picade becomes da. Now, since the dalit is no longer closing the syllable, but it's going to take the comet's hay vowel and start a new syllable, that's going to leave the kof open and pretonic. What does Hebrew verbs do? What do Hebrew verbs do with that kind of a syllable? They reduce to what? They go to vocal shiva. That's right. And so then I'm going to see my vocal shiva here. Picadu. Okay. Pick a, excuse me, pick a da. Pick a da. I still have my Kyrick vowel, still have my Dagish Forte here. Pick a da. Okay. What about this next one? What do I get? I have my Dagish Lene, and I should have Picade, and then my Ta ending for you. So he summoned, she summoned, you man summoned. Dagish Forte there. But if you look carefully here, what's going to end up happening in Hebrew is my. Sere will become a pathak in this form. So it becomes picata. Picata. Now, I don't want to get into the rules for why this happens. There's really not a rule as much as a, uh, a characteristic uh, situation where these um, closed and accented I class vowels will, uh, in many situations, change to an A class vowel here. But I have picata now. And uh, you can still tell that this is a PL perfect. How do you know that? The Kyrick under root one, the doubling in root two, okay? Even if the theme vowel doesn't have the Sere, you can still tell that's a PL. Now, the 2FS is going to be p k with the T, but then the Sere will become a Pathak here. So, Picad T, Picad T. So, you woman summoned. And then, what do you think the one CS will be? It'll be pick with a doubling dot, cod T, and my accent mark on the cove. Pick cod T, pick cod T. So that's I summoned. The three M, the three CP. The basic form would be Kyrick under root one, doubling in root two, and a sere with the dalit. But the shurik is a vowel. Dalit slides over, takes the syllable. Leaves this open and pretonic, it will reduce to what? Vocal shiva, exactly. Okay, so it becomes pick a do. They summoned. Pick a do. The next one, what do you think I'm going to get? Am I going to get a sere or a pathak under the kof when I add these consonantal endings like I added over here? It's going to get a pathak, exactly. So picad tem and picad ten with the doubling in root two. So you plural masculine and you plural feminine. Y'all 
summoned. And then for we, it's p w double root to picadnu. And my accent's going to be on the cove. Right, remember these heavy endings pull the stress all the way to the back, so there's no accent on root two. I try to keep my accent on root two here unless I have vocalic endings like comete or the heavy consonantal endings like tem and ten. Those pull the stress to the last syllable. Okay, so those are the PL perfect forms. And we started with picade. Now, our Puwal form, to go back to that, the Puwal perfect is Pukad. Pukad. So it's like Pukad, Dagesh Lene in root one because it's a Begat Kafat letter, Dagesh Forte in root two, and then I have Kibbutz and Pathak. Kibbutz, Pathak. So notice that the word PL is using the vowels of the PL perfect. Pukad. I E P L I E. Notice the name Puwal is using the vowel points of the Puwal perfect. Pu kad u a pu a pu a right u a. So um, the uh, the way you're going to tell the difference between the P L perfect and the Puwal perfect first and foremost is the vowel that goes with first root letter. So I I, I tell my students. Have you ever heard people say that they have to mind their P's and Q's when they're watching their prices, when they're shopping? Mind your P's and Q's. Well, here you have to mind your P's and poos, okay? Mind your P's and your poos. All right. So if it's P, it's P-L. If it's poo, it's poo-all, okay? All right. So poo-cod, poo-cod. So let's, let's work out the paradigm for the poo-all perfect, okay? If you go to page three, you have a spot to begin writing out the Puol forms. Okay, so look at the Puol perfect. So our basic form is Pu, doubling root two, Pu cod, Pu cod. So what do you think the third feminine singular will be? It'll be Pu, what? It would normally be Pu kada with the doubling, root two, but What's going to happen to that pathak there when I add that commentate to the dalit? Yeah, it's got to reduce. What's it going to reduce to? Vocal shiva. So I get pukada, pukada. So he, if the PL is he summoned, the puwal perfect is he was summoned. Okay, make it passive. And then the... Um, the rest of these will be translated with the appropriate pronoun for the subject. So, Pukad, he was summoned. Pukada, she was summoned. To a mess would be what? What do you think? Yes, Pukadta. Pukadta. Basically, it's the same as Pukad, but I'm adding the ta ending. So, I've got this silent shiva here. Pukadta, you were summoned. 2FS, pu, double root 2, kad, t, pu, kad, t. And then I was summoned, pu, what? Double root 2, pathak, again, pu, kad, t, pu, kad, t. Now, how will I say they were summoned? Pu, and then I would have had Pukadu, but when a shurik is added to the dalit and it separates to create a new syllable, what will happen to the pathak with this vocalic ending? It reduces to vocal shiva. So pukadu, pukadu. So, um, what is the difference between the PL perfect 3CP and the Puol perfect 3CP? There's only one difference, right? This is, yep, exactly. Pikadu, pukadu. This vocal shava obscures the A vowel and the sere. So the only thing I have to go on is the I versus the U, the P versus the poo, right? So mind your P's and poo's here and you'll know whether it's the PL or the poo all. 
All right, so Pukadu, they were summoned for the um, 2MP, another kibbutz, another doubling dot, and the Pathak. Pukad Tem, Pukad Tem. That's uh, y'all were summoned, feminine plural, second person, Pukad Ten, and then we were summoned, Pu. Pukadnu, okay? Put that doubling dot in root two, Pukadnu, and the accent mark is going to be on the Kofir. All right, so we were summoned. Uh, that's, that's the PL and the Pu all perfect. Almost the same, except for those vowel points. Now, let me just make a larger point about the, the PL perfect versus the Pu all perfect, okay? So take a look at your principal parts page. On the principal parts page, here's what I want to point out to you, okay? Um, the cal and the nifal are generally related. In what way? The cal is active, the nifal is the passive, if there's a cal meaning, okay? The pl and pu'al are also related in the same way. Active, passive. I want to skip the hith pile for a moment. Go down to the next set of stems, the hifal and the hofal, which we haven't learned yet. But you guessed it, didn't you? How are they related to each other? The hifil is active. The hofal is the same as the hifil, only passive. Okay? Now, here's what I want you to notice. For all the passive stems, which ones are the passive stems? Nifal, puol, hofal. How do they all end? All end with all, don't they? Which means... One of the characteristic features of the passive stems in Hebrew is an A-class theme vowel, okay? So in the nifal perfect, what kind of theme vowel did we have? We had an A-class one there, didn't we? In the puol perfect, what kind of theme vowel do we have? We have an A-class vowel. Look at the hofal. In the hofal perfect, it's got, well, it's got an A-class vowel, doesn't it? Um, the cow and the nifal are not really related to each other the same way the PL and Pu'al are, but what I want you to see here is that for the PL and the Hifil, what vowel class is that Sere? Is that A, I, or U class vowel? It's an I class vowel, whereas the passive stems have an A class vowel. Okay, Look at the Hifil. Look at the theme vowel for the Hifil perfect. It's a Kyrick Yod. What vowel class is a Kyrick Yod? That's an I-class vowel, isn't it? And there's also Ceres too, isn't there? Which is still I-class, whereas the Hofal has A-class. Okay? So I just want you to see that the PL, Puol, Hifal, Hofal are active passive counterparts that have I-class vowels for the active th theme vowels a-class theme vowels for the, um, the passive. Let me show you one more thing that I hope will be helpful to you. Now that we've identified all the passive stems, look at the nifal participle. What did we say about this kamets under root 2, the theme vowel for the nifal participle? That A is what? It's long. It is irreducibly long, isn't it? That is to say, it never reduces to vocal shiva. Look at the puol participle. It's also a passive participle like the nifal participle. Look at what its theme vowel is. It's a kametz, long a. What do you think is true about that long a? It is also irreducible. It will not reduce to vocal shiva. And here is a hofal participle. Guess what? That long A is irreducibly long also, okay? So there are, is some behavior in the passive stems that mirror one another, and these are they. All right, let's go back to our paradigms. So we've been looking at the PL and PUAL perfect. Take a look now at the PL, well, actually here, one more, one more comment. In the PL and PUAL perfect, are there any stem prefixes that characterize the stem? You remember how the nifal stem had a noon prefix that characterizes the stem? Are there any characteristic um, 
consonants that are prefix stems for the PL and PUL? No, there's not any, okay? So right now, the only, the only stem prefix that we've seen is the Nifal's noon uh, stem prefix. So the PL and the PUL don't have any prefixes with their perfect, okay? So when you see perfect personal endings on the back side of a verb form now, it could be the cal, or it could be the PL or PUL. How are we going to tell the difference? Well, it's fairly easy, isn't it? The cal has what vowel under root one in the, in the cal perfect? It has a kamet, right? Pa cod. Pa cod in the cal perfect. Pa cod, long A. PL has a kirik, pkade. Pual has a kibbutz, pukad. Okay, so it's pa pe pu. Pa pe pu. All right? Now, look at the imperfect. Do you see we have our prefix yod with our three root letters, but what vowel pointing goes under the yod here? What do we call that symbol? That's a shiva. Is it silent or vocal? It's vocal because it's at the beginning of the word. That is true for the PL and the PUL. Okay. But the PL gets an A-class vowel under root one, and then the dagish forte in root two, and then the sere, yufakade, yufakade, okay? The puwal is yufukad. Root one keeps that kibbutz there under it, and root two is doubled and has the pathak that we have seen, okay? So yufakade and then yufukad. Pikade is he summoned. Yufakade, he will summon, right? It's imperfect, so typically future. He will summon. Yufukad, he was summoned. So that's your vowel pointing. Now, you might be sitting here going, well, wait a minute. I see the sere. How did the kirik become a pathak? Well, do remember how I said a little earlier, sometimes um, kiriks become pathak and sometimes pathaks can become a uh, kirik. Um, over here, or I-class vowels can make them A-class vowels. Uh, what we have here is uh, an A vowel under root one. This was originally in Semitic. The P-L was really a Pa-L, okay? And so I just want to show you that in Aramaic, Aramaic has a, uh, has a P-L stem, but the P-L stem in Aramaic is called the Pa-L. It, it, in other words, it has an A vowel under the root uh, root one, okay? And in Hebrew, this A vowel has shifted to an I, and it becomes picade. In Aramaic, that A vowel stays, okay? So Aramaic's uh, PL is a PA-L, and it uses the A-class vowel. In the imperfect, the A vowel that originally was there that changed to an I in the perfect for the Hebrew, that A vowel stays and all the other forms. So you're going to see the original A vowel there. And that explains why you get this, this A vowel um, in the imperfect. Now, all of that is just a matter of historical Hebrew linguistics. If that's helpful to you, great. If it's not helpful to you, then forget what I just said, okay? Um, if you ever get a chance to study Aramaic, Syriac, or other Semitic languages, then you're going to see this Pa'el form, okay? And it reflects the, the, the true vowel pointing. Uh, all right. So I'm going to erase this now. Remove all vestiges of it in case this just caused your brain to freeze. So now let's go to the, to the second and third pages of the handout and let's work out the forms, okay? For the PL imperfect, uh, what's the vowel pointing here? It's Y, fa, double root two, kade, y fa kade. So what do we do for the three fs? We just switch the yod for a tav. Guess what? All the vowel points stay the same. Okay, y fa kade, to fa kade. He will summon. She will summon. The two ms is identical to the three fs, so it's t fa kade. 2FS is going to be 
to facade, but then a curic yod is added to the dalit. When that vocalic ending steals root three away, it's no longer closing the syllable. The kof is open and pretonic, and what will the sere do? It will reduce to a vocal shiva, which is what verbs do, right? Open pretonic syllables go to vocal shiva. Now, for the first common singular, I will summon, I would normally like to see something like this. Vocal shiva, pathak under root one, double root two, ufakade. Okay, but you tell me, why can I not put a vocal shiva under the olive? It's a guttural. That's right. And what kind of vowels do gutturals prefer? They prefer A-class vowels. So what this is going to get is the A-class compound shiva. Okay, so afakade. Afakade. So I'm still getting vocal shivas. It's just the kind of vocal shiva that the guttural has to get. Okay, so I will summon. On the plural side, yifakade with the doubling dot takes a shurik after the dalit. So what will happen to the sere here? It reduces due to the open pretonic syllable that's left when dalit slides over and takes the vowel. Yifakadu, yifakadu. They will summon over here to fa kade plus the na ending for they female. Tefakedna. And my accent will be here. Tefakedna. 2MP. Tefakade becomes with the shurik at the end. Tefakadu. Okay, got to go to vocal shiva here. Tefakadu. 2FP is identical to the 3FP, so I won't rewrite that. And the 1CP is what? Vocal shiva under the prefix noon. Pathak, doubling dot, sere, nefakade, nefakade, we will summon. Okay? So that's the, the PL imperfect. Let's take a look at the poo wall real quick. Thank you. So there is a doubling dot in that 3FP. Okay, so make sure we get that in there. Doubling dot in root two here, don't forget that. And uh, obviously, it'll show up here if we wrote out the whole thing. All right. So let's take a look at the Puwals imperfect. So what did we learn? PLs and Puwals are going to have what under their imperfect prefixes? A vocal shiva. And then I get a U-class vowel here. Yifu, double root two, then pathak. Yifukad. Yifukad. Okay. So we're not going to write all these down, but just to show you a couple, uh, if I want to say, uh, this will be, he will be summoned. Okay? He will be summoned. Now, she will be summoned. I just changed the yod for tav. Everything else stays the same. T, fu, and uh, double root two. Pathak under root two. Tfukad. She will be summoned. Okay? What about the one CS? It'll be a fu cod, but what has to go under the olive? Compound shiva. All right, a fu cod. And then a couple here on the plural side. I have a, they will be summoned, will be y, vocal shiva, kibbutz, fu, doubling in root two. Should be a pathak, yifukad du, but with that shurik stealing root three, the kof will be open and pretonic and has to do what? Reduce to vocal shiva. All right. Okay, so there you go. Any questions about that? <clears throat>